Okay, I haven't posted on YouTube for a while, but I have been releasing videos every week on my website, joecrabtree.com, in the VIP lessons. Basically, what the VIP lessons are, uh, are lessons of the things that I'm working on. So I've been playing drums for 22 years, and I'm always finding stuff that I need to work on. And these days, more than a few years ago, that stuff is pretty basic stuff that I think is applicable to anybody playing drums, whether you've just started or whether you're a pretty advanced player. So currently I'm working on ways to tighten up grooves. I heard Vinny play a great sounding shuffle groove um, on a Chaka Khan sound check. I'll play you it so you can have a listen. So this sound check, somebody posted it on YouTube and there's all sorts of crazy fills and solo-y type stuff going on in this, but that was the bit that I liked the best. It was a very authoritative groove, it sounded great. So I sat down and tried to play, you know, something similar to it, it sounded like crap. So I've been spending time trying to figure out why that is. There's obviously big holes in my playing that I need to work on. So I've got some exercises and I originally recorded a pretty long video that explained how to play that groove and a bunch of things to do to get better at it. But I realized I wasn't doing those things because I was sharing the ideas with you and I wasn't practicing them. So what I've decided to do is break it down. I'm gonna give you one exercise with a few facets to it today. And I want you to work on that and really stick with it until you feel absolutely confident with it, until you feel like it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Because it's gonna seem really basic. If you're a quite an advanced player, this is gonna seem really basic. But this is the kind of thing that I think you have to work at if you want your grooves to be like really good, okay? And this is also gonna approach something that uh, is a 16th note groove that's between straight and swung. And people have a word for this, and I can't remember what it is. Stung or sweight or something, none of those sound quite right. Uh, struffle, I don't know, um, shate. <laughs> uh, the, the idea is that it's not straight 16th notes and it's not a shuffle, it's something in between and it's, it's kind of a, a fluid sounding groove, it's nice. So this exercise is also gonna help you get to that. So there's two things to it. The first thing is to have a repeatable stroke, okay? I've been reading a golf book. I'm, I don't wanna play golf, but somebody told me that this book was very well written and it was a great example of an instructional book. So I got it just out of curiosity. And I'm only a couple of pages in, but he talks about a tournament where he was in a difficult position and he played this shot that was everybody thought was miraculous and it was an inspired shot. And he says, you know, in his mind, it was just one of the shots that he practiced. He said he'd been working at that specific shot since he was 12 years old. He'd done it thousands and thousands of times. So it was just a case of, for him of just playing the shot that he knew and he knew where the ball was going to go and it went there and that was good. Same thing applies to drumming. If you can't repeat your stroke, so when you're playing straight eighth notes on the hi-hat, if you can't have a repeatable stroke that you're comfortable with, then your hi-hat notes are going to be uneven. So we want the hi-hat notes to be even. List that Vinny thing, it's, everything's nailed. It's very, very tight and on the money. So I'm going to give you an exercise to help you with that. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about hand technique and attacking the hi-hat. Um, so I'm doing other videos on this, so again, check out joecrabtree.com to find some of those. But basically, my fulcrum isn't here like it once was. It's between the thumb and the middle finger. Uh, the stick is almost coming down the middle of my hand so that my fingertips, mainly those fingertips, can be on the stick. So if it's out there, then that's harder to happen. Also this way the stick's in more of a straight line with my arm. Um, feels weird if you haven't played like this. I remember seeing a picture of this once in a book and thinking it felt really awkward and I wasn't in control of it. But again, to get more into this stuff, check out my website and look for some hand technique videos. Um, but basically, a couple of things to keep in mind. One of them is to let the stick move like this so that it, it's basically there's a pivot going on between your hand and the stick. So rather than this, where the stick is moving straight up and down, you want this to go on. Watch any great drummer and you will see a lot of this kind of arc happening, okay? And the other thing is to basically control the bounce of the stick. So I'm gonna play into the hi-hat and what's happening is I'm using my wrist, but I'm snapping my fingers at the end 
just to drive the stick into the hi-hat and control the bounce. So I, the way I used to do it would be I'd have a fairly loose uh, grip and I would use my wrist, but the stick was still doing its own thing to a degree. So I'll show you the two ways not to do it. So this is the fixed arm thing. So that's with it tight in, in the hand. So from the wrist, it's not too bad, but I want a little bit of freedom here and I want to be looser than that. This is the too loose version. You see with that, if I hit the tip on the top, then it bounces a lot more. And if I hit there, it doesn't bounce so much, but where it ends up is, is not controlled. And this is what I'm working on now. So this is with the wrist, but with a little snap of the fingers at the end. And the shoulder of the stick on the edge gives a nice chunky sound and I want it to be as consistent as possible. So you're gonna get plenty of time to experiment with different ways of holding the stick and you're just looking for something that feels comfortable. Another tip from a golfer is to have a grip like you are holding a little bird. So if you hold it too tight, you're gonna kill it. If you hold it too loose, it's gonna escape. Okay, so you want your, it's not so much a grip, it's a cradle of the stick, but not so loose that you lose it, okay? but you always want to be thinking about how relaxed and comfortable things feel. So the idea is that you have a metronome playing, um, I've got this set to 160 BPM quarter notes, okay? Um, sounds like that. <clears throat> and I'm actually using Polynome here, which is an iPhone app that I developed uh, in conjunction with Lucas Ives. And the feature I'm using uh, is one that allows me to have a bar of click and then a bar of rest and you can have as many bars of click and as many bars of rest as you, as you want but this is a really good way to test your time because playing with the click is great but if it's always playing with the click then you're relying on the click to have the good time and you're just practicing being in time with something else so what I've got here is a bar of eighth notes followed by a bar of rest rest two three four click rest so you've got to play along and hope that you come back in time with the click all right so this is the exercise going to play along with the click and i'm aiming to just stay perfectly in time Now, what I want you to do is do that for at least five minutes. And in that time, I guarantee you will start questioning so many things. You'll be like, where should my arm be? And how should I do this? And, oh, that wasn't even, and that sped up, and that was too loud, and that was too quiet. And then you start thinking about other things. So something as simple as playing, you know, eighth notes on the hi-hat, you realize there's all these holes in your knowledge that you just normally do things and you don't think about it, but there's all sorts of things that are happening that you wouldn't necessarily want if you were aware that they were there. So five minutes of playing along, bar of click of eighth notes, bar of rest, and you wanna to get to the stage where you're 100% confident that this is a repeatable stroke and that you're always gonna be in time when the click comes back in. Now, this might take five minutes, it might take 20 minutes, it might take an hour, it might take a month of practicing an hour every day, but when you've nailed this, you are one level higher than 90% of the drummers out there because most people don't spend the time working on this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that makes the groove that you can play and Vinny can play sound like it does when Vinny plays it because all his notes are perfectly in time, is very consistent. Uh, and when as lesser drummers play things, there's all of these things that are unintentional. So it's like the good golfer hits the ball, it goes where he wants it the average golfer hits the ball and it could go in one of a multitude of places. So we wanna be, have this repeatable stroke, okay? So the next thing I was saying about that struffle or the straight thing, in fact, I'm gonna put that in another video because I don't want you to move on to that until you've nailed this. So go away and practice this. If you would, um, write in the comment of this video, if you haven't tried it already, how easy you think this is gonna be for you to do because it sounds easy, right? Just playing with a click. Um, and then go and try it and come back and write a comment of you know, how easy you actually found it. Maybe you find it as easy as you thought. Maybe it was more difficult than you thought. Maybe it was easier than you thought. Um, and also leave a note 
to tell me how good you were, you know, how accurately you landed with the click. And if you want to get this app, by the way, um, you can find it on my website, joecrabtree.com. Uh, there's a link on there in the banner on the top or go to polynome.net or search for polynome on the uh, iTunes store. Um, you can also, uh, if you have a computer, buy your drums. I have a program called Pyramid, which runs on a PC and Mac, and you can do the same thing, program in bars of click and bars of rest and different tempos and rates and things like that. It's pretty flexible. Um, so leave a comment to let me know how much you had to practice this until you felt really comfortable with it because I've been working on this for a while now and I'm getting better but it's still I still don't have that confidence. Um, if you like this approach, this idea of actually finding things that make you a better drummer and you want more of it, head over to joecrabtree.com and check out uh, the masterclass, the membership, the Gold Pass membership, which gives you access to the VIP lessons. That's new lessons every week showing you the stuff that I'm working on and a bunch of masterclasses that break down complicated solos and uh, grooves and things about technique and all sorts of stuff. So that's at joecrabtree.com.